just before I go in there for a little dip. I have a little something to get off my mind. I'm gonna wait, please everybody share. Share and like, please. I'm going to um, give people a bit of time to get in, get settled, get your popcorn. Now, this is not easy for me to do. It's not something I wanted to do. And I'm gonna say it now, James Goddard, if and when you hear this, everything that I'm about to say, I will have no problem saying it to your face. But seeing as I'm 3,000 miles away, I can't. And I have to tell you, from the first time I met you, I liked you. I met you backstage, the day for freedom, 6th of May last year. And you came up to me and you were absolutely shaking like a leaf, told me that you were very anxious and Understandably so, because you're about to speak before thousands upon thousands of people for the first time in your life. And you know what you said to me? And I'll never forget it. You played some music to me, and you know what it was? It was the American National Anthem. And you said that that was what inspired you, gave you strength. So, James, this is not easy for me to do. This won't be easy for me to say. It pains me to do this. But you know what? When your actions affect me directly and affect what many of us are trying to achieve, what are trying to do, fighting for the future, for the generations to come. When you impact it negatively, time and time again, I'm gonna say something and I'm gonna tell you it now, James, your little wuss out just now you caving to the threat, the threat of a prison sentence. I, I can't believe you did it, okay? Then again, before anybody gets all, oh, it's the, the right attacking each other and oh, it's gonna damage the movement. What movement? I've yet to see a movement. Seriously, there's no movement. It's, in every, it's a figment of everybody's imagination because there's one thing that I've seen in the past year and a half of being, putting myself in the front line, deciding to make that move and open my mouth and put my money where my mouth is. When I walked into Speaker's Corner and challenged the public prayer, when I challenged the police, the Muslims, to what was going on, and then debating Muslims week after week, okay? By myself, I went by myself, James, by myself. I felt passionately about what the hell is going on to Great Britain, what is happening to the children, to the women, to the men, at the hands of Islam and the capitulation of our government, okay? So I have put myself <laughs> in the firing line. I have been thrown to the ground, and I know some people say I fell to the ground, but you know, when you get pushed, that's what happens when you've had 15 operations. So, I, I'm gonna go back, okay? Well, I, I'm so dis disgusted. I'm so, I'm mortified by your wimping out don't put yourself in a fight. Don't, don't, you know what? If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the bloody kitchen, James. I don't know what your game is. I don't know, I don't actually know you. I don't know who you are, but all I can see is that you've just created a big rod, another rod. I've got a few rods in my back and you've just created another one because guess what? You're caving in to something that you were not guilty of. 
You were not guilty of doing anything wrong to that Anna Subri, nor the so-called racist remark. I've seen the footage umpteen times, and I can see hand on heart that you had a clear-cut case of common law rights. You were absolutely within your rights to do what you did. And you know what? You know damn well that if you hadn't been doing anything right, that those policemen around you would have, would have arrested you, James. You allowed the fake stream media and the political class that you rail against to win. You handed them a win. Not only did you hand them a win in a, such a wimpy fashion, but you have now created a precedent. You have now made it so that anybody who wants to challenge a politician, and trust me, I've challenged a few politicians in the past year. In fact, I had to write a little list, okay? for the people I have personally challenged on my own. Let's go with Gina Miller. Hmm, clearing out the auditorium when she was doing a little bit to the, to the snowflakes, right? Angela Eagle, David Davis, Ed Miliband, not so much, Hilary Benn, Andrea Ledson I challenged in Parliament. Now, Brian Cox I had a, I had a go at, uh, in uh, in central lobby inside the House of Parliament about his taking Tommy to back to court. You know, nobody knows about that. Nobody's seen it, but trust me, I did it. And, huh, what's the name I haven't mentioned yet? Hmm, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue, James. Oh, that's right, it's Anna Subri. Oh, cast your mind back to January when, uh, I sort of interrupted a little soiree. Well, I didn't actually interrupt. I paid for a ticket. I attended her little soiree, her little, you know, whatever. Amongst a bunch of bloody sycophantic, lefty lunatic Ramonas. And um, I questioned her. And I also defended you. In fact, in that, in that particular uh, encounter with her, I said about the yellow vests. I, I actually asked, I said that you didn't do anything wrong, because you didn't. All you did was ask her why she was betraying the country, James. The fact that you were you know, walking alongside her and Brian, the I mean, he calls himself Brian the Lion. I mean, he's turned into Brian the little pussycat. You're both pussies, the two of you. The two of you wimped out. Where's this fighting for what's right, taking on the political classes, taking on the, the system, the justice system? I'm sorry, not only, James, did you completely wimp out, but you also endangered the freedom of others. And shall I, and I, you know, unbeknownst to you, James, I know what actually happened in Manchester with that Joel loser. I know what you actually did, okay? Because I've heard it from the horse's mouth. John Hurst, James, does he ring a bell to you? John Hurst, the Mackenzie friend, who you've paid nothing to, he doesn't charge a penny, he's an ex-policeman who's an expert on common law, gives his services free of charge because he believes in our common law rights and the British Constitution, right? He came to your aid. He spent hours upon hours preparing your case. Now, trust me, he's not moaned about it, but I know what he's done. I know what he's done, I've seen his work. You had a defense. He, despite the fact that what you did with that idiot, Joel, was really dumb, I'm sorry, but that was uncalled for what you did. You know, the problem is, James, you, were, you cannot control yourself. You cannot control your temper when you are confronting people, certain people, you know, standing in front of the police and pushing your chest out saying, to the police, each and every one of you's fair game. Yeah, you know, way too out of uniform. You're all fair game. What the hell was that about back in January, James? You know, honestly. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back. And by the way, people, if you could share this, because you know what? This is a takedown of not just James, but the whole fake, faux, whatever the hell, these people, all these people who put themselves up as some kind of freedom fighters and defenders of free speech and, you know, taking on the system. Everyone has kind of let the side down, except for Tommy. Tommy is the only man amongst all of you. And do you know what, James? To quote a little phrase 
that the President of the United States used when he was talking about Pocahontas and her Native American blood, well, guess what? I've got more balls than you, James, and I don't have any. I'm sorry, James. It's got to be said, you, you know, I burst a big bubble, in fact, a balloon, right? Didn't you know, maybe you might have known about it a few weeks ago. I went and took down a balloon. I'm afraid I'm bursting yours. If I don't burst yours, I'll feel like I've failed. Because sadly, James, you seem like a nice guy, but you just don't have it. You don't have what it takes. And the problem is, is that you are actually, sadly, more dangerous than somebody who doesn't open up their mouth. Because guess what, James? I took on Anna Subri. I took on Anna Subri in her soiree. I cleared the room, got rid of the Ramonas. She skedaddled. And then, a couple of months later, I called her a traitor in the House of Commons. You may have noticed the little you know, 30 second clip of me calling her a traitor. So you know what, James, because of you, because of you, when I come back, I could be actually arrested and charged, charged with harassment. But you know what, James, unlike you, I will take them on and I will defend myself for whatever it takes. And if they say prison, I'll say, bring it on because I didn't do anything wrong. But because you couldn't face prison, oh, that's only if you were found guilty, James. And because of John's expert work, John Hurst, the Mackenzie friend that you and Tracy have both neglected, neither of you supported him. All he asks for is costs, is, is transport, transportation costs and hotel accommodation because he has He's in a situation, not that he did not make of his own, okay? I'm not going to share it because that's for him to do. But I'm going to tell you now, we need experts like John Hurst. And for somebody like you to totally disrespect him, totally disrespect him, totally ignore his hard work. He put hours upon hours into your case both cases of Manchester and London to do with our common law rights, our Bill of Rights, you could have won, James. But no, poor James, little James. Oh, he doesn't want to go to prison. You know what, James? And the other thing is he kind of blew it because you publicly announced on one of your broadcasts that, oh, oh, God, I couldn't go to prison. I wouldn't last two weeks in prison. I'm sorry, James. It's got to be said. I am so... It is... We are in... We, we are in critical times. You know, it, it's, it's a man's game. You know, it's a big boy's game, James, and you are not a big boy. I'm sorry, you have potential. I thought you had potential, but you've shown more than on, on multiple occasions. Let me tell you something. I remember Speaker's Corner, right? I said to you, I remember before you went to Speaker's Corner and I said, James, you know, when you go in, just try and be, just listen, observe. Don't say anything, just listen and see how it goes, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, you didn't listen. Did you listen? No, you didn't listen. No, you went in like a bull in a china shop, right? Yeah, ugh, blustering in there with you and Avi Yemeni. And then you and Danny Tom. I hate to do this because, you know, I, I do. I don't like doing this. I really don't. But it has to be said, James and Danny, you know, Okay. When you went into Speaker's Corner last summer, right? I was there and I saw a crowd of people. And I went to take a look and who did I see? I saw Ali Dawa. Wah, 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 wah. And a load of other people around you. And there you were in the center. I made my way in the middle to just give you a little bit of uh, assistance, right? Did you even, I don't think you even looked at me, James. You didn't even, you blanked me, right? But even so, Ali Dawa gave the old, you know, the easy question of, oh, where does it say in the Quran about violence? Right? I said to you, 929, James. I said, Surah 929. I said it to you, I gave you the answer. Did you use it? Did you say it? Did you ignore it? No, you didn't, you didn't. 
Why not, James? Why didn't you? You, I was right there next to you, and I said it to Ali Dawa, but you ignored me. I tried to rescue. I tried to not rescue you, James. I tried to assist. Okay, teamwork, teamwork. But you know, for you, I guess it is the old I in the in the word team. It's you. It's about James Goddard, the James Goddard, the the. Uh, well, let me see. How did you describe yourself, James Goddard? The public figure or something. I mean, I'm sorry, James, you know, this is harsh. This is harsh, but it has to be said because you have put me and you know what? John Hurst was going to back out of my appeal for the Have a Gay Day case because of you, because you lied in court in Manchester and stop lying, James. Okay. Tell the truth. Be a man. You did hold up a bloody sign in the court. You risked John's freedom. John Hurst, your Mackenzie friend, you wrote a stupid, childish note to that idiot Joel and held it up for him to see. You risked contempt of court. You risked John Hurst's freedom because he would have been charged with you. It's not a game, James. And you know, you got the first taste of reality when the word prison, when you were sitting there with your plea deal and uh, a reality check came to you when, oh, the potential for actually going behind bars was there. And then what did you do at your first opportunity? You caved in like a pussy. We don't need people like you, James. I wish you would just quietly go back, write some speeches, because you're, you're good at speeches. You are good. But do not. I mean, you, you know, what, you're banned? You're banned from around Parliament for five years? <laughs> Look. Do not argue your case after the fact. After you pled guilty, you had every opportunity to argue your case. The work that John put in there, you did nothing wrong. You challenged Anna Subri very respectfully, I have to say. You were walking alongside her. Everybody can see the footage. And you were talking loudly because it was quite noisy. But you weren't, you didn't insult her. You called her Nazi, her, said she was doing a job of a bloody whatever. But you know, that's your right. You have a right to petition under you know that you know what i'm going to tell you james why i want to know why did you cave why now you've just made it harder for all of us who want to talk to mp to challenge their betrayal the traitorous uh, i mean say i'm going to probably get arrested on on saturday because of you because of your wussiness, I could very well be arrested and charged with Anna Supri, right? But, you know, but that's not, this is not why I'm giving you crap, okay? This is not why I'm giving you a reality check, James. I'm telling you, you didn't even, you weren't even humble when you came out of court. You came out of court with a fighting, oh, we're not, we're going to tell them now. I'm going to go to the Daily Mail. I'm going to go tell them what I think. No. Oh, and, well, I called her a Nazi. Well, guess, guess how many times I get called a Nazi? Well, James, don't fight your case after you plead guilty because it doesn't really go down very well, James. That's what you should have said in court. You should have said, no, you can take your plea deal and shove it where the sun doesn't shine because I did nothing wrong. And you didn't. You didn't do anything wrong. You didn't racially uh, insult somebody who happened to be from Lithuania. The last time I checked, I think their skin was white. So you have now got convictions for racially whatever, whatever word soup that they come out with these days and <laughs> for whatever harassment to an MP. Oh my God, you pled guilty. Oh, so you have to take it, take it. I don't want to hear any more. I don't want to hear from you, James. I'm just going to switch off. If you have the nerve to get on YouTube and defend your case and say how we're going to stand up to them, we're going to stand up to them and fight for our rights. Well, what did you do? No. No more, James. You blew it. Big time. And you've blown it for a lot of it. You have done more damage. I know you don't mean to. Okay, I don't think you mean to. Maybe you do. I don't know you, James. I really don't know. I don't know many people because guess what? I have been fighting, right? Everything that I've done in the last year and a half myself, because guess what? The so-called movement, everybody, you know, free speech advocates and let's where we go one, we go all. Well, no, 
I, actually, it depends who you are, because, you know, you've got to actually be in the club. Because for some reason, my face didn't fit the agenda. I mean, and including Tommy. I say, I have all the respect for Tommy, what Tommy has done, what Tommy has served, what Tommy has given, what he is still giving. He, listen, James, your concern about going to prison was something a little bit different than Tommy, okay? Tommy, his life has been threatened. He's been given, he was given a death sentence. You were going to be given what? Whatever, whatever they gave you, right? So, you know, everybody, the, the, the whole, I don't know, the social media platforms, the YouTube platforms, everybody does think they're bigger than they are, okay? And the thing is, is that it's not about individuals, okay? It's not about individuals. It's about the cause, okay, James? It's not about James Goddard. I'm not going to mention any other bloody names. It's not even about Tommy. You know? It's what so many people sacrificed their lives for in the past God knows how many hundreds of years to fight for the country. To fight for the... Well, I suppose only in the last... 80 years when the well 100 years with the wars world wars about fighting against fascism and all that stuff which doesn't mean anything anymore because everybody's so diluted the mean they don't even know what the meaning of the words by you pleading guilty james you completely and utterly screwed up uh you know you've got supporters that's great People may pay for your fines for you, fantastic. But really, James, you know, if you hadn't come out and done your big uh, bravado and oh, the, oh the, the reporters are causing me harassment, stop playing, James. Stop mucking about. It's not a joke. It's not, don't, don't belittle the situation. And anybody else out there, come for Christ's sake. We are literally in the thick of it. We are running genuinely out of time. But, you know, I have a case coming up to do my appeal. I don't know, I still don't know I'm going to be uh, charged with the balloon. And trust me, James, if they offer me a plea deal, I'm not taking it. <laughs> I'm just not. I mean, seriously. Ah. You know, if anybody can set up, I want to set up a GoFundMe for John Hurst, okay? The, the Mackenzie friend, the ex-policeman, who is an expert. He, you know, he does, he's done lots of videos on, on YouTube. He, we need him. We need him. We don't have defenders. We don't have defenseless. They all work for the government. The establishment, the media, the fake stream media, yeah. So, you know, James, when you treat a man like that, a man with that kind of expertise, with such disrespect, it just makes me sick. I mean, maybe, you know, I probably should have said something sooner than now, James. I probably should have said, told you sooner about how I felt. I bit, bit my tongue. I'm surprised I've still got a tongue, considering how many times I've bitten, my, bitten it not to say something. Because I liked you, James. You know, I did. I liked you as a person. You seemed like a nice guy. Unfortunately, you went on the wrong pitch. I'll do a golf analogy. You should have gone to the pitch and putt, not onto the open course, okay? Because you can't play. You don't have the, you don't have the weapons, James. You don't have the, the knowledge that you need to take on these people, the swamp. So, James, do yourself a favor, take a bit of time out, don't, please. You're driving me crazy with your bravado and gusto and all that crap and everybody who supports you and pats you on the back, you know? I, I just don't have time for anymore. I don't, life is too short. Life's too short. And I'm just, I'm gonna say it like it is. I'm, I am now, from now on, when something happens and somebody does something that is going to be have an impact in the bigger world to more people not to individually if it's one person and it's their thing 
Yeah. But if it's something like what we're fighting for right now, we are trying to get Brexit. We're trying not to get swallowed back into the Europe, well, stay swallowed in the European Union. We need Brexit as we voted for. We need to get the politicians to do their jobs. But we've got to do it smart, guys, seriously. But I can tell you now, you know, if, if I get arrested, uh, when I get off the plane, I'm not telling him when I'm coming back, so, you know, that might help, but... And Anna Subri wants to do a little, uh, I feel harassed, even though she was lying through her teeth. Then so be it. But James, just retire. You know, do something... I say write speeches or something. And as I said, I will say this to your face, James. I've just, I'm just... You have, with what you've done in the last few months, since January of this year, actually, really, really, I mean, Speaker's Corner, you're completely trashed. You, Danny Tomo, Avi Yemeni, all you lot, uh, going in there like complete, I don't know what that was. And don't do it again. Please, guys, let's do it smart, okay? Be smart. And, you know, I did not want to do this myself. I didn't want to be by myself and go and challenge on these all these MPs and take on the police with their abuse of power. But, you know, I wasn't actually considered part of the team. Nobody still had the courage to tell me. And if it has anything to do with my past, if we want to talk about people's pasts, I think if we put a list of what has happened, I think um, you couldn't really have a reason why I should not be part of the group. You know, it's sad. It is sad that egos are involved. Anyway, lecture is pretty much over, James. I can't see if anybody's chats. I, I don't see any chat, by the way, so I'm not responding. I will take a look at the chat. And you know, you know, if you're in this game to, to make friends, it's the wrong game, okay? I, I don't expect to make any friends in this. This is, this is, this is just, I've got nothing to lose but life itself, right? And the, the lunatics on the left, when they say, ah, oh, the right are eating themselves. You know, I only care about people the, the people's opinions that I care about are those who are people that I respect. So there's not many people that I care about what they think about me. It's a very short list. <laughs> and I'm not happy to say that. I wish it was a long list. I wish there were lots of people out there that I respected and that you know, I admired, but no, there's way too many uh, wannabes. There's too many people who shout their mouths off and have nothing to back it up with. Sad. And I, I hate to say it, but it's, it's not looking good for, the, for Great Britain. For England. The lions. I'm not seeing them. And James, you're not a lion. Sorry, mate. You're more like a pussy cat. Really. And all you men out there who, who thinks it's big, you know, John, what's his name, Moore, the taxi driver. Oh, my God, the taxi black cab. You know, I respect black cab drivers for the knowledge. But John Moore, wind your neck in, mate. You sound like an absolute... You don't sound good with attacking women. Not a good look. Right, and Brian the Lion, uh. oh, Tracy's gang, sorry, Trace. You should just quietly fight your case. I mean, how many people in the yellow vest that you've managed to just implode? It's all, it's all the same. It's a, it's a shame. But where there's a will, there's a way, and I've got the will. So I'm gonna keep fighting. I'm very disappointed, extremely disappointed in so many people. And um, I can back up everything. Well, one thing I say, I can back up everything I say. Everything I say, I can back it up with evidence, hard evidence. And don't get me wrong. I do not think I'm right all the time. Most of the time, maybe. 
no. I can be corrected. And I make mistakes. But the difference is I learn from my mistakes. James, you haven't learned. There's too many people who are just so full of themselves, they just can't see the wood for the tree. So, lecture's coming to an end. Uh, I'm here for a little while longer in beautiful, beautiful Florida. I'm gonna jump in that gorgeous pool, cool off, because I can tell you now, you know, no, this hasn't given me any pleasure, right? I'm gutted, I'm gutted, honestly gutted that I've had to do this. But James, you know, really, you may, yeah. I had to do it, I've had to do it, because you've, you've risked me, you've risked my freedom, you've risked my, and others, but mine in particular with Anna Subri, right? By your little capitulation, your little wimping out. You wimped out, James, you wimped out, and John Lawrence said it quietly, actually, he did say it, just for a brief second, he uttered those words, that if you, if you take the plea deal, then that means they win. And guess what, James? You gave him a big fat win. Not only her, the witch, that stupid woman, Subri, who's a traitor, and I'll back that up, but the police. You've given the police. I'm gonna call it the JB patrol. No, J JG, sorry. James Goddard patrol is gonna be outside parliament, right? Anybody who goes up to an MP now is gonna get threatened with arrest. I don't know, James, why did you give up? Why? You knew you had a case. If you do another YouTube, when you do another YouTube, explain why. Why you didn't go with the defense, the, the rock solid defense that John Hurst spent many, many hours preparing with all of the, the, the common law rights, the constitutional rights that you had to do what you did, which was purely approach the MP when you had the opportunity, she happened to come out, and you decided to go and ask her why she, why she was a traitor, why she went against her constituents' wishes, and why she's going against the nation that voted to leave. You know, you didn't do anything wrong, James. You've done some dumb things, but in that instance, no. And the two instances that you approached her, you didn't do anything wrong. So, for the life of me, James, I don't know why you gave up. I'm going to write for write. I hope everybody keeps writing the letters and, um, you know, don't give up, everybody. There's still a fight. There's a battle. We've got a battle. And, uh, you know, James, maybe you could assist in the background, backstage, James. Just don't come out in front, okay? Do yourself a favor. Just take a break, please, because it, it sounds pathetic when you say, oh, I'm going to take on this and I'm going to take on them. No, you didn't. You had your chance and you folded. So do us a favor, James. Wind your neck in, put your ego in a box where it belongs, and just be a good dad, okay? Take care. I'm gonna uh, sign off now. I've worked myself up into a, into a, into a whatever. It's now almost 90 degrees there, so I'm going to sign off. And uh, I'll be on later, maybe not tonight, maybe this week. But everybody, please understand that everything I'm saying, there's a reason. There's a reason, and I have just cause to be thoroughly pissed off with what James Goddard has done. And Brian, the two of them wimped out. Tommy should be disappointed when he finds out. And nobody back him up. Come on, Abby, for crying out loud. <sighs> Right, I'm done. Catch you later, guys. Uh, take it easy, and the fight goes on. Watch this space. Base Amy out.